All right, this is the Dell Precision 7550 15 inch mobile workstation. It's what I've just issued into our production teams of mechanical and electrical engineers who on a daily basis use the Autodesk product design and collection suite. They mostly use Autodesk Inventor 3D CAD, uh, AutoCAD 2D CAD, a bit of Nastran simulation, a bit of CFD, a bit of ANSYS, a bit of other things, but mostly Autodesk Inventor and AutoCAD. But getting a mobile workstation right, mate, it's all about picking the perfect parts for either the job or the jobs that you do or whoever's getting the laptop. Uh, and for Autodesk Shape Manager based CAD applications like Inventor, like Fusion 360, like Revit or Parasolid clients like SolidWorks, you want the Xeon on the newest architecture with the fastest single core boost frequencies and from there you can tailor the rest of the spec to suit what you do so check out how to buy the right workstation for autodesk inventor video that i did uh, about a year ago and that's a full system reference guide along with this one why do mobile workstations even exist for some extra info on all of this topic uh, which might explain why i'm not talking about gaming laptops here but before that, if you'd like to help support TFI and the work that I do here, you can do it without actually even giving me anything. So if you're an existing Autodesk software user, or if you're thinking about subscribing up to a new Autodesk license like AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, Fusion 360, anything, you can click my referral link down in the description, which also shows Autodesk's current running promotions and discounts. What then happens is that link takes you over to your local Autodesk store, the same page as you would have gone to anyway, but Autodesk will know that I sent you. And then when you renew your license or you subscribe to a new one after clicking that link, I get a very nice referral fee from Autodesk, which is worth more than thousands of people watching YouTube ads every month. Links in the description and thank you very much for watching TFI. Currently, at the time that this was ordered and at time of recording, the best in class CPU for mobile workstations for most 3D CAD applications is this. It's the Intel Xeon W 10885M, bringing eight cores and 16 threads to pro workflows, boosting to 5.3 gigahertz on a single core, although 5.1 gigahertz is, is a more realistic and likely max boost clock, but uh, as for the remainder of the spec, mate, I gave these units 32 gigs of DDR4 2933 megahertz ECC RAM and the Mobile Quadro RTX 3000. Gave them a terabyte NVMe PCI Express solid state drive. Uh, and out of the very uninspiring archaic list of displays maxing out at 60 hertz, <laughs> I opted for the impressively color accurate 1080p anti glare panel. But seriously though, Dell, we're seeing 300 hertz panels in gaming laptops now. It's about time we move past 60 hertz in these units. But then our purchasing team, without me even asking for them, decided to order 40 of these, the WD19 180 watt docks to complement the Precision 7550s. Please, for the love of all that's holy, do not buy this lump of solidified snake oil. I could make an entire video ranting about this dock and how woefully abysmal it is for the out outrageous price of 476 quid for me, what is essentially an extension cable or a glorified USB hub. But long story short, I've had to instruct our entire engineering team to cease using this dock because it causes the CPU to throttle to 800 megahertz across all cores when this is plugged in. And it's absolutely not worth my time looking into why. I don't know, maybe we bought the wrong docks out of the several copy paste versions that Dell have of the exact same thing called WD19 something, which would be easy to do because none of them actually list support for Dell's current gen laptops on their marketing pages. But anyway, Dell have regressed with the 7550 design a little bit, in my opinion. I, have, I adored the carbon fiber weave on the previous gen 7540, but this year they've opted for like a bland matte silver unicolor finish all around. It's not a big deal, but man, I love the look, the look of last year's 7540. But the build materials are at the top of Dell's game, as you'd expect on the precision line. You could unleash a swarm of toddlers onto this laptop and it would come away without a single solitary fingerprint in sight. It's class. But either way, it's good to see Dell are actually, you know, iterating on their designs from year to year and not just reusing parts, given that they, they do one of these every year. And I, looking at this, I can't see a single panel or feature reused from last year's model. Even the keyboard is different. Speaking of the keyboard, this is where some interesting design choices have occurred in this year's 7550, with it being the first ever precision to not have that touch nipple mouse in the middle of the keyboard, which I'm rather glad to see. Uh, but a hairy man once said, with every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And Dell have reacted to their positive nipple action by... <laughs> <laughs> by moving the power button into the actual main keyboard array. Why? 
Why would they do? Why would they do that? Possibly so they've got something to fix for next year. I don't know. But do they not want to sell this laptop to developers and programmers? I don't know. It was up here in last year's model, and then moving it to this to here in this year's model just makes literally no sense. But whatever. So the webcam on the Dell Precision 7550 is a 720p 30 fps webcam, and it's absolutely dreadful. There's no excuse for a webcam like this in a laptop at this level there's better webcams than this objectively and they should be in this laptop it's worse than the lenovo webcam that we replaced this laptop with we've had complaints from engineers saying that you know their conference calls are much worse significantly worse after being given this laptop which is sad to hear also the microphone quality i'm not too sure yet i have set off a gpu intensive workload in the background which has caused the fans to spill up so i'm quite curious to see if any fan noise has been picked up uh, by the microphone. The connectivity is much the same as last year, 7540. It's still strong, although people are now kind of expecting a little more as times are moving on, like it's got gigabit ethernet. Shouldn't we now be thinking about 10 gig LAN? If even Intel do a 10 gig LAN, I don't, I don't know. But connectivity is otherwise acceptable for a laptop. It's got HDMI 2.0 and mini display port 1.4 out on the rear, which makes this pretty much zero hassle to rig up mostly all VR headsets that are on the market right now, whilst also allowing for two connected external displays to be hooked up without the requirement for that alleged essential accessory. Uh, seriously, Del, please do tell me more about how you concluded that this dock is an essential accessory. What, the, what, what he's given it? Remake. In summary, 7550 is the latest precision born into a family dating back years, steeped in history. And the precision units obviously aren't exclusively just for us, just for CAD use. You can spec these to suit almost any pro workflow. Uh, although I'm not really sure who's buying a precision and putting a four core i5 in and just CPU graphics or why those options are even there. But there's a core i9 option for those who don't mind putting in a CPU that runs slightly hotter, possibly marginally faster, yet dancing a little closer to danger than its identical equivalent Xeon. Uh, there's up to three super fast class 50 solid state drives for workflows which ingest handle and generate insane amounts of data such as the likes of i don't know algorix momentum multi-body bulk material simulation as for graphics you can go all the way up to the mobile quadro rtx 5000 what you do requires rtx or cuda based or or any kind of gpu acceleration like visual cgi artists using keyshot or autodesk vred uh, they're going to have 16 gigs of VRAM for scenes which would otherwise fail completely on anything less. Unreal Engine or Unity designers, 3ds Max with its Arnold renderer can leverage GPU ray tracing. Architects using Enscape, uh, they can leverage this. By architects who just use Revit, they'd be wasting their money on a super powerful GPU. But uh, if you're pushing your designs, uh, your architectural scenes into a third party renderer, then that's when you need to think about a GPU. So yeah, displays. Yeah, they're lacking high refresh rates still, but you can go up to 4K with HDR 400 support. Uh, the displays here support 100% of the sRGB and DCI-P3 space, uh, and of course, unique to mobile workstations. You can, but of course, opt in a stellar 128 gigs of RAM, which as has not at all been mistakenly demonstrated already on other channels, you definitely do need all that for flow simulating baby's first model box in SolidWorks CFD. <laughs> Okay, you can go up to 2933 megahertz ECC RAM here, or 3200 megahertz non-ECC, and indeed up to that 128 gigs of RAM, depending on... Well, look, at this point, there are very few people working on data sets consuming that much RAM, let alone absolutely must have it in a laptop, but the option is there. Okay, that's all well and good, but how does this actually perform in the real world? Right, well, this unit right here was spec'd and ordered, obviously, for Autodesk Inventor, 3D card use, like I said at the start. And when it ran the gauntlet through Invmark, which is the new TFI benchmarking suite, which tests a huge array of CAD workflows, such as assembly patterns, constraints, FEA workflows, data translations, uh, the Xeon did not disappoint, mate. 7550 scored a huge 35701, putting it about even with the desktop i9-9900K, actually beating it out in single-threaded performance, but only falling marginally behind due to the tight thermal controls enforced on Xeons under all core workloads. But can we just stop and let that register for a second? This time last year, the 9900K was the single-threaded king of all CPUs across both AMD and Intel. We now have that in a laptop. And a laptop 
that I know I can hand over to an engineer and he won't get frequent blue screens due to thermal or power delivery irregularities. It's ISV certified, top quality silicon across the board. It's mental, mate. So over the duration of Invmark, temps did consistently hit 100 degrees, but that's kind of to be expected and not really of any concern to me. Single core frequencies, as I expected, also peaked at around 5.1 gigahertz with all core workloads evening out to be around 3.2 to 3.5 gigahertz across all eight cores, which is likely to be a full gigahertz per core lower than the eight core desktop 9900K, which explains the 9900K's higher multi-threaded score in Invmark. But as you can see from the advanced detailed system sensor logging that I've integrated into the Invmark benchmark, uh, and as I've been explaining on TFI for years now, even when put through intense sustained graphical workflows, the GPU load was rarely ever stressed and utilized beyond 40% usage. However, video RAM, as I've always said, is super important mate with peak vram usage here being just shy of three gigabytes but if you play pay close attention to the sharp and immediate and dramatic increase in video ram usage there's a lot going on there but your video ram bandwidth is one to keep an eye on so that level of performance like i said will translate across into other applications but this was picked for inventor and kind of barring gaming laptops running unlocked and overclocked that's the absolute best you're going to get today on a pro platform and if you want Neil, to pick the right laptop for your business, services are available with prices starting at an extortionate rate. All right, running in the background now with some charts showing how the 7550 performed on my usual suite of CPU and RTX based tests. But to be honest, mate, the RTX 3000 graphics card in here wasn't specced to be great at V-Ray or V-Red or VR. Uh, I'd have probably gone for, at the very least, the RTX 4000 if I was using this for VR, but they are there if you're interested. So there you have it, the Dell 7550 mobile workstation. Is this the fastest laptop for Inventor in the world right now? Nope. Some gaming grade laptops will pull higher scores on Invmark, but I'm not I'm not going there right now. If, you, if you're wondering why, uh, why I just wouldn't buy a gaming laptop instead and give those to the business if they're faster then like i said again at the start watch this video up here why do mobile workstations even exist whatever you're thinking you'll get your answer in that video all right thank you very much for watching uh, that's all i've got i try to keep this one a little bit shorter than my natural style would have normally have led on to uh i'm not sure if that's actually panned out <laughs> the way i intended but i am curious to see if a shorter video helps with engagement so apologies if i didn't go into as much depth as i would normally have done but it was a little bit of an experiment. But either way, that's all I've got. My name's Neil. I've got to go. You stay pro. Doodles. My name's Neil. I've got to go. You stay pro. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. <laughs>